Hi, I'm Josh Affer from Manhattan Edit Workshop. I'm here with Harry Karamidis, editor of many films. And look, two we watched this past week, Children of the Corn, Squeeze, three Back to the Future films, um, in addition to About Last Night, which we talked about a little bit today. Correct. Yeah. Um, so we're, I guess we can start because we just came out of the classroom. We worked with students today and last week. Uh, have you done teaching, uh, sort of, have you done educational experiences like this before, or is this the first time? No, I have done it before. I've worked <clears throat> with several, several universities and colleges where I've gone and done master classes for a couple of days at a time, mm -hmm. where I worked directly with students as well as presenting some kind of a, a usually an evening lecture for a, a couple of hours with some demonstration things, uh, a la the things I showed, uh, showed you guys. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it, it's something that's familiar to me and something that I like to do. I enjoy giving back to, to young people things that I've learned and uh, I want to pass on what people were willing to pass on to me. Now you mentioned in the class that you were mentored coming up as, a, as an assistant editor, although well, you actually were just, you could emerge as an editor. Exactly. But, um, you know, being able to give back to people and, you know, um, sort of take people up through the ranks. Um, in, in a way that is a way to give back is important to you. Yes, it is very important. I feel like there are many things that we can learn and build on. I don't think we should uh, not stand on other people's shoulders when we can. And uh, that doesn't mean that some things don't have to be learned on your own, with your own experience and your own abilities that need to be honed and, and you need to figure out exactly how you work because all editors work in some, some different manner even though it's a similar kind of job that's being performed. So I do like to pass that back on to people so they can be building upon something that I've learned and gone, that's gone on before me. The things uh, that I would recommend other students do would be to study things in film school, not only in your discipline, but in other disciplines as well. I think that learning of how actors deal with, with scenes and situations and how directors direct and how producers have to get money together and do those kinds of things is very helpful to us in what we do because we're the synthesizers of the final uh, product. All the things come together through our hands mm -hmm. and there, all the mistakes need to be filtered out by us in order to make this project come to fruition. And you, you had said, and maybe this was specific to documentary today, but you're saying like you were given all the grapes and were told to go make wine. I thought that was an interesting yes. sense of challenge. <laughs> yes. being, perhaps that was specifically to nonfiction, but uh, it seems like it's not completely inaccurate. Um, and you had also, um, you sort of came up as an editor in documentary and ethnographic film, and um, you know, it, did that somehow speak to the career change you made? Because you're, you're chiefly a, a narrative film editor, as you're most exactly. known for. Yep. Did that inform your work style, or did, how did that educate you in terms of the work that you ended up doing after that? I think that it, it did help me. It, it helped me to understand how to formulate story and to, and the, the most important thing I think I learned from documentaries that I took into uh, narrative film was you don't have to take the first answer. You don't have to have that film tell you what to do. You tell the film what to do. As in documentaries, you're just shaping, molding, pushing, prodding, and the same thing can happen with a narrative film where you have lots of material and it may not be exactly what you'd like it to be and you need to manipulate it and formulate it in such a way that it works for the conception that the director has for what he wants to get out of that particular scene or the entire movie. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, learning from, coming from a nonfiction background, you had said, you know, it's sort of, it's a discipline that you can apply to any kind of film editing. And it really, I think, there's a resourcefulness that I've seen in, in nonfiction editors who've moved into fiction where they do, they say, you know, just because that coverage is from that scene there doesn't mean I can't steal it and use it here if it works best for that, you know, for, to balance the film or to, if it achieves some goal, you don't have to stick to the script necessarily. That's right. And they learn that by not having a script at all in <laughs> some instances. You have a guideline if you're lucky. And I think the other thing that you learn from documentaries and educational is you learn not to be intimidated by amounts of material. That you just can do something with no matter what amount you have. You might have a little bit, you might have an overwhelming amount, but you just learn that that's the material you have to deal with. You move it, shape it, punch it, prod it, mm -hmm. and make it tell the story. So you made a dough out of that, or making a, exactly. some sort of cake. Um, now, we'd also the question of, of technology, I guess, you know, do you think people are at 
you know, uh, putting themselves at a, a greater advantage, learning more of what the technology is available to people today? I feel like technology is is useful to people. I don't think it's the be-all and end-all. I'm happy to have worked in all, all formats, starting with regular 8 millimeter film all the way through 35 millimeter and 70 millimeter and, and uh, several digital uh, aspects of, of editing, including uh, Lightworks, Avid, Final Cut Pro. And I found that they all helped me to do my job. They didn't do my job. They were all tools to be used. They were all saws and hammers and levels and they allowed me to make this piece of work that I'm going to need to finish some way or other and it makes your life easier in some ways, more difficult in other ways. Mm -hmm. You have more time so more is expected of you as the quote unquote picture editor. I was picture editor and I had one job and then when I had more time because I didn't have the physical manipulation time of all the 35 millimeter film going back and forth on shelves and into bins and hanging on hooks that they said well might as well do some sound effects because you have some extra time and then why don't you do some color correction and why don't you do some special effects and why don't you do some temp music so you end up having five jobs it's totally outside of your discipline exactly but you know hey why not just mix the film for us right, <laughs> right. Um, and you had said something i thought was very interesting is that the, the editing process happens here and here not on the keyboard, right. you know, and that's the thing. It's really, and we try to teach that here, is that you know, our paintbrush is a, is a computer, and it's strange because it's a technical art. Unlike a lot of other art forms, you have to learn about technology on some base level to paint with in in film yes. to do that job, and uh, it's unlike any other any other art form that I can think of. Yeah, that's absolutely true, especially if you're a writer, you just take things out of the ether mm -hmm. and you put it onto a piece of paper and you've created something that's a story, a narrative line that people are going to follow and uh, when we do it, we it's been translated through several several people and several things like cameras and processing of either uh, trans transferred to digital or brought through uh, film processing and then it's given to us and we have something physical in that to actually work with. And so it's, it's, more like, it's more like a sculptor who has to have a chisel and a hammer mm -hmm. and a piece of rock and he sees that, uh, that David in there that mm -hmm. he has to knock it out some way or other by chipping this piece off or putting that piece on. And it becomes an interesting, uh, I think, process where you have to use the tools and that are available to you. Sometimes they're more rudimentary Sometimes they become much more sophisticated as, as you're, you're able now in this workshop to show your students how they can do things with After Effects and mm -hmm. all those pro programs which I think add to the creativity. Now you also, you founded a film festival. You moved from the West Coast, now you live in Western Massachusetts. Correct. And you founded a film festival. Can yes. you tell me a little about that? Sure. We, we, uh, I moved to Western Massachusetts with my wife about five and a half years ago and my introduction to the community was a phone call from people who, uh, a couple of ladies who were running the cultural council in Massachusetts. All the towns and cities get a certain amount of money to be used for local culture. And they had an idea, one of the women uh, named Tamsin Merrill, who was the head of the cultural council in Ashfield, had an idea that wouldn't it be nice to have a film festival in Ashfield? And so they said, oh, here's this guy that just moved from Hollywood. He, has, he knows about films. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll ask him. So they asked me to join the Cultural Council, and I went there, and then they presented me with this thing about, what do you think about a film festival? And I said, well, that sounds like a nice idea. Why don't we do it? So they kind of uh, turned it over to me. Um, we, started, we worked on it through the Cultural Council for the first year, and we got, we got, the idea was to present a short film festival in honor of Cecil B. DeMille, who was born in Ashfield and he stayed there three days so we had to make it a short film festival in his honor and then uh, we also wanted to promote uh, the local people from to uh, get used to using video and, and making their own projects and so we said we set the limit at five minutes and we said it should be made in or about Ashfield in some way. When's the festival? It's last, September 24th this year. It's usually oh, it's a great time of year too. Yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to add? I'd just like to add that I think more more people should be trying to give back. More people mm -hmm. should be interested in, in promoting film and its, and its process and uh, 
how, how, to, how to work on it. I think that a, a lot of people have access to things that they didn't have access to because mm -hmm. it's so inexpensive nowadays and I think that you can't have too many Picassos. Everybody can get, in, get an opportunity to do something and there'll be, there'll be people who, who just rise up out of this milieu of mm -hmm. easy, uh, inexpensive access to motion picture, video, television, milieu and they'll rise up to be whoever. Steven Spielberg played with eight millimeter cameras. So why can't we get people, even five Steven Spielbergs who started on uh, video and cut things at home on iMovie and that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. And if you want to submit a five minute movie, just go to our website, uh, ashfieldfilmfest.org and uh, check out the rules. We accept entries uh, until get, August 22nd. I'm gonna get a cutaway of Cecil on the, yeah. uh, on the hat there. It's great. Yeah. All right, well, thanks a lot. Thank you.